Okay, good evening. I'm going to call the Board of Health meeting to order at 6.30. And if I could have everybody please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay. So what we're going to do is start on the agenda, but we're going to take um, number three first. Um, number three is the reorganization of the board. Every year we have to reorganize um, once everyone's been elected. So this is when we would make a motion for someone to be the chairman. If I make a motion that Jen Kanoya remain chairman of the Board of Health. Second that. Oh. <laughs> Anyone else have anything else? No? no? No discussion. I have a motion in the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> All right. So it stays as it is. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Next, we'll do accept the minutes. So we need to first accept the minutes of July 19th. And you were not at that meeting, if I recall. Is that the one you were not at? Let me look back through. And you. That's right. The 23rd. You were not at the 23rd. Okay. So first we'll accept the minutes for the 19th. So you would need to entertain a motion because Ted was not here. Motion to accept? Yep. Okay. A motion to accept the minutes. Okay. I have a motion and I'll second that. I have a motion and a second to accept the minutes from July 19th. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So that passes. To make a motion to accept the minutes of August 23rd. I'll second that because you weren't here. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Minutes are up to date. Number two, Region 2 Emergency Preparedness Trailer Discussion. Okay, the, the, she um, Was she supposed to be coming? I don't know. Did Sarah say she was coming? Okay. Okay. Um, it, it appears as though there's uh, um, a little issue with the with the trailer. Um, I remember when we first got the trailer, I secured it for the region because uh, uh, I was the biggest representative for the area. Uh, and what it does is that trailer, the emergency preparedness trailer, handles a lot of equipment for any of the surrounding towns in our sub district that uh, that needs it. Uh, unfortunately, the trailer is still not registered. Uh, there's a question of title and insurance and who's going to do what and all of that. We, uh, as a town, we don't own that trailer. The state owns that trailer. Um, and for some reason or another, there's um, an opinion from the state that we should be the one to try to register the trailer, register it and insure it. Um, unfortunately, you can't insure something that you don't own. Right. Um, you can't register something that you, you don't own unless it's being leased to you and we have no agreement from the state that says that's the case. I had a little discussion with uh, a couple of the next tier up for Region 2 and I told them, I said, you know, it's a state-owned piece of property. I said the state should be the one or the, the region should be the one paying for the title and paying for the insurance and the registration. Um, I'm sure that our insurance, the town's insurance company is not going to be happy about uh, the town of uh, East Overshoe coming in and hooking up to our trailer and driving it away uh, and whenever they need it. And who's going to pay the insurance if they crash it between here and, right. and their destination? Um, the town, most towns and many of the towns are self-insured up to a certain limit. They have. Uh, Twenty-five or fifty thousand dollar deductible, or whatever the deductible is, and I'm sure this town doesn't want to be responsible for somebody else driving their equipment and 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 a piece of equipment that they don't own. So that's where it stands right then. Okay. I I, th I might have planted a seed with the state or the state representatives to come up with a little bit better plan than knocking on the door and ordering the town to to come in and uh, register it and insure it. And we never got a title, nothing on it. There's no it. title, there's no nothing on it. Right. Uh, it's nothing that the town says, we don't own the trailer. Right. 
so we can't get a title. We don't own anything in the trailer either. And we don't own anything in the trailer. So that's where that stands. So the issue is going to be coming up some, somehow or somewhere along the line. For some reason or another, Sarah's been dealing with Rich uh, Camignani about it, looking for a title or looking for a certificate of origin or something. Um, and the, the trailer manufacturer will give a certificate of origin, but they're going to say they turned it over to, they may have delivered it here, but they, they turned it over to the state. Right. So, okay. again, uh, and I told them if that was going to be the rules or the mandate for, for uh, uh, having the trailer here, right, he said, uh, you might want to reconsider them for putting a trailer somewhere else because I don't really believe that, that the town of Dudley is going to pony up with, uh, with that kind of money to, for something that they don't own and they're not going to, uh, that anybody can come in and take it right. and drive it away or haul it away. But I said that's not my decision, that's up to the board. Now I just have a quick question. I know Chalton has a trailer. Not is a Region that, 2 trailer. No, that's their own? It's their own personal That's why I just was curious. No. There are several communities that have their own. Right. Uh, region 2 is uh, uh, all of Worcester County, all 66 cities and towns. Um, and what they did was they broke it up into, I think there's five or seven trailers throughout the, all of Worcester County. Uh, these trailers have uh, gloves, bandages, radios, uh, uh, cots, portable uh, uh, tents or weather stations, weather. Uh, there's, there's a bunch of uh, uh, satellite radios that are out there as well. Um, that if the phone system should go down, at least the satellite radios would still be available. Um, the only satellite radio for this, for Southern Worcester County is in Webster. Um, so uh, there's a lot of emergency equipment that's out there and it's, every, every community is not gonna go out and buy the stockpile that they really need. And there's no need for that either. As a regional approach, we'd be able to mobilize a lot of the equipment all around. Okay. That's, and that's the purpose of that trailer. Okay. Any questions or anything for Tom? We don't. We did run a drill using that trailer. Um, when we opened it up, uh, Charlton was there as well. Charlton had a very well-organized trailer. I didn't realize that they <coughs> owned their own. Our trailer, on the other hand, uh, everything was pretty much in the boxes, in the wrappers. Nothing had been opened. Nothing was organized. It was just, it was just uh, like right out of the store. So, it, and it's still that way. We un unpacked a lot of it, used some of it, and uh, put it right back in. Yeah. Well, we, but one of the things that, because sitting at the fire station, and I suggested to EMS at the fire station to. Um, any equipment, whether it's got expiration dates on it or not, it's still a, uh, the item may not have an expiration date, but it still has a shelf life. Uh, bandages, dressings, uh, rubber gloves, uh, certain pieces of equipment, they were all, they have a shelf life. And what they should be doing is instead of buying their own, they should be dipping into that inventory and buying to replace it so that they set up a rotating stock system. Um, we made that suggestion and I don't know that anything has been done about it but um, if we had control of that trailer we would need to have someone organize it and buy bins and, and sort and, and well again we haven't we've given it to the we've let the fire station take control of it because they have the site to store it they have the manpower to do whatever needed to be done if they want to set it up and, re and organize it they can do that all they have to do, if they need funds for it, we can deal with Sarah, because there is annually, there's all kinds of money that Homeland Security sends to, to the region for projects like this. Um, if they need shelving units, they need locks, they need, uh, I don't even think there's a padlock on the trailer. Um, I was just gonna ask you who had the key. If there is, it's a fire station, because it's in their control and custody. But hmm. I don't know. The state was even supposed to provide locks and stuff, and I don't know that they ever did. We've had so much turnover down here with, uh, yeah. with our staffing, and, and the state has had turnover with their staffing. Uh, that uh, If there isn't a lock on it, there should be one very shortly. 
So mm -hmm. we'll look into that very quickly and um, maybe it's something that at some point we could go down and check out and, you know. Something that should be done immediately. Yeah. So, um, okay. okay. I'll stop on my way, find out. All right. Thank you. Yeah, we can always, if, you, if we're going to buy a lock or take it out of uh, Board of Health uh, um, monies and stuff, we just leave the key with their, in their custody. Yeah. That's all. So that they have access to it. That's fine. Right. Okay. Up next is solid waste control discussion. Um. Okay. Um, with, with some of the housing complaints that we do get, um, I'm, I'm getting a little concerned and I, I'm trying to find a way to uh, realistically deal with uh, uh, solid waste and some of the solid waste that we get with people leaving um, stuffed upholstered or upholstered furniture mattresses out free for the taking for this than that um, it's always been my my premise that uh, uh, if it's if it's a usable or a, some type of a, a good commodity that's looking to be salvaged so it should be protected, not just put out on a curb or not dumped in a pile. You're supposed to look like it. you're trying to preserve it, make it look good. Um, with a couch that's been out for a week out in a curb, uh, exposed to the weather and the dew and the moisture and everything else, it ends up they get moldy. Or they get vermin in them. Um, I um, mean, it's not a very good situation, and somebody that, that really needs a piece of furniture and stuff may go out and be tempted to pick it up because it looks clean and all of that, but they might be inviting disaster. Um, as a result, a lot of the housing inspections that we go into, uh, we find that uh, uh, bed bugs or fleas or anything like that that come along with these pieces of furniture, um, bed bugs and fleas are, are are um, infestations that don't just miraculously appear. It's not what they call spontaneous generation, like uh, the plague. Uh, they're usually hitchhikers. They're picked up somewhere else and transported in. Uh, they either come in with bad furniture or they come in with bad clothing that isn't cl completely cleaned, sanitized, and, and repaired or, or, or uh, uh, prepared. Um, Unfortunately, some of the people that do need them, they take them, and they end up inviting disaster. Um, we end up having to treat and chase bed bug problems and, and other in infestations, um, and it's not a very good situation. And I'd like to have the practice of leaving bulk items out on the curb, find a way to have it stopped. Um, or find another way that uh, make sure that they get them to the right places like the transfer station uh, down on Indian Road down at the highway barn or uh, bring it to uh, uh, Pratt on Cudworth Road in Webster for the same situation they only cost if you can manage to get them there yourself it's about 20 bucks or 25 bucks they haven't disposed of but it's properly disposed of it's not an open invitation to uh, um, to passing on nuisances to some unaware individuals. Um. So, <coughs> do we need a town ordinance, or where, where is that? Is that a, is a, you know? In in reality, all that we'd have to do is we'd have to go out and exercise. All we do is exercise the state law. The state law says that um, you're not allowed to pile rubbish out. Period. And again, if we can. If we, I would consider my personal belief is just considered rubbish. If you put a couch out on a, or a chair or whatever it is, an upholstered piece of furniture out on a curbside, and it's been there through two or three cycles of days, <laughs> and through the dew and the, the one, condensation, one, 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 night's one night, you know, uh, it's no longer considered a stuff. It's considered rubbish at that point. Um, if they want to go and put it out on the curb and then take it in every night and protect it, something different. I, I, I can't begrudge people that. But um, There are better ways to deal with it. They could call Catholic Charities or they could call uh, 
uh, Salvation Army or uh, Goodwill or somebody to come if they've got an extra piece of furniture that somebody it's in good usable condition and some, somebody might be able to use, that's fine. If they buy a piece of furniture from uh, the furniture sales place, they also have a take-back program. Everybody has a take-back program that uh, you don't have to worry about uh, um, how you're going to dispose of a piece of furniture. They will take used furniture back. Sounds like an all or nothing to me. I mean, if you tell somebody they can put it out and then put it out to give away free and then bring it back in their house, who, who's to say they're going to do that? And the next day they could say, I brought it in, I brought it back out. Right. Yeah. It seems all or nothing. Right. We'd be up all night if we, if we verifying all the, upholstered, the furniture placement. Upholstered yeah. furniture really shouldn't be... Shouldn't be left outside unattended to the... Yeah. We've gone through this before yeah. you. So you'll basically. So I think yeah. I think what we do is we kind of I brought this up as in a public awareness type of thing first, and then uh, um, if push comes to shove, then we can start to do enforcement. But uh, um, it's really something that needs to be addressed for not more than just the unsightliness, but for passing on of a bad situation right, on, right. onto somebody else. So. Most definitely. Okay. And um, maybe what we can do is. Post the the web there is a new town website it's just been recently updated and we're going to be able to actually post things ourselves in the next few weeks and maybe that's something that we can post you know um, and give them call here 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 you know what I mean you know rather than leaving your furniture out if you're looking to get rid of it give these places a call one eight hundred junk or something like that. You know. <laughs> Just point and it disappears. Just point at it and it disappears. So, you know, something like that. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? That topic on that topic. No. Okay. No. Up next, number five is the Ramshorn Road noise complaints. It's a follow up. Um, Tom's going to give us an update of where we're at. Okay. The. Um the noise complaints have been going on up, uh, a, a, intermittently over a, for over a year. Um, virtually every time. There was one or two times that we went out there that we, we did make observation of some noise. Uh, and we did some soundings. Now the soundings that we've done uh, with a decibel meter, um, they were within, basically within tolerance with the exception of one time when there was a close proximity to the property line. I did go and talk to the um, to the abutter and I asked them, I said, if you keep a safe enough distance um, from the property line, uh, the noise that you do generate is in compliance with the code. So uh, the standard compliance is 10, around 10 decibels over ambient or what the normal background noise is for that time of the day at that time. Uh, and it was running about 10 to 10 to 12 decibels. 12 is not enough to trigger uh, an action because the piece of equipment we have is not a certified piece of equipment either. In order to certify a piece of equipment, you're looking at uh, sending it out and having it done two or three times a year to the tune of $500. But what it does is it puts us in a ballpark. Like I said, one of the times we checked it, it was the noise level was 30 decibels over. Well, that's certainly enough. And history proves that that's enough to uh, instigate uh, or to initiate the next the next step, and the next step is ordering the um, the potential vi the alleged violator to hire a uh, an acoustical engineer to go out and do the soundings and do what needs to be done uh, to make whatever remediation they need to. They don't have to stop writing or stop making noise. They just have to prevent the noise from going over the property line. Build a wall. Build a wall, put a noise buffer, uh, green fence. Uh, uh, as we see down on uh, down the road a little bit, uh, right. uh, a deflector shield with uh, storage containers. Um, I've done it with 12-foot fences in Webster. Uh, um, and those, are, those, unfortunately, that's the legal things that can be done. Um, zero noise tolerance is not something that the, the courts or the towns or the rest of the world can take care of. Um, 
so at this point uh, I did make a, a follow-up visit and a follow-up visit uh, um, unfortunately by the time I set up and all that it stopped riding in the area uh, but the, the abutter had made some modifications to his site um, so that the kids couldn't ride close to the to the property line um, so I, but I didn't get to do a any clean testing because now the bikes weren't making any noise so okay. I don't have any questions at this point though that's gone on to another department correct right for yeah so we'll we'll just keep it and if there's any other issues we'll bring it back up <coughs> All right, number six on the agenda is the public hearing regarding the inspections of nail salons. So at 6.51, I will open the public hearing. Okay, let me grab my stuff. So we have a draft, so let me step back up. I will let you know that on 9.13, Teresa and I went out and hand-delivered invitations, notices, copies of the drafts to each and every salon in Dudley so that they were aware that this was going on this evening and they had all the information that we'd be going over. It was also, everything else was done the way it should be, but we did, and we had them sign that they received it. So if they wanted to come, we encouraged them to come tonight to hear what we were doing, but um, just so you know. How many salons are there? Um, roughly eight, nine. Well, there's some individuals within places like they'll rent, do booth rentals, so we hand it out to each. So we handed to everybody and gave them a brief little synopsis of what we were. Yeah, um, a little synopsis of what we're doing and why, so. Okay, hmm. so we have the draft in front of us. Now I know everybody um, get this via email. Did yeah. We all had a chance to look it over, go over everything. copy we're looking at this one yes here. is it the same as this one here no. this. Is this, one here? this is the guidelines so I'm looking at this one correct and this one is not that's the regulation right there's a guideline and a regulation so Tom have you do you want to <laughs> Want to add anything? Um, have you read through them? Yeah, I was just kind of curious on item 16. Which one? Um, the, the effective date. Oh, yes, we have to discuss that, right? The effective date going to be why the 180 days was chosen? Chosen. Why it was chosen from today? Why 180 days? I don't know. Is that what it was? That's what it was on the the one that we were working off of. Okay. Um, you might want to consider whenever you're going to. I mean, you're going to be talking about ma making regulation today, and it won't go into effect until. May. Yeah. And then it's going to change again in July. Something so, like that. Right. That's why it's in red. That's why it's in red. Mm -hmm. So what should, let's say. Well, I mean, I, th I would think that uh, um, the, only, the, the, the only thing that we were We were looking at a, a compliance of uh, 
uh, to get it onto a cycle for renewal. And well, everything that's labeled as date. Right. Um, and date and date and date, we were looking at somewhere, I think we looked at what, July 1st? July, right, because we didn't want to do right? January. Right. Because so we, we have... did the July 1st bit. Okay. The, um, the only thing we were looking to push off was uh, to give about 180 days was uh, uh, the compliance with the ventilation system. Am I correct? Is it, am I correct about that? Uh, the 180 days was for compliance I, for I the. I remember that, that number coming up. We didn't. Uh, the people that were for any of the or existing come up. the existing businesses, we were going to give them uh, six. Actually, I thought we were going to give them more than that. Um, Um, yeah, I'm. We we're going to give them like a, a 18 months. 18 months, yeah. We we're going to give them 18 months to be able to get for the existing businesses to get their ventilation system in order. Right. Uh, any of the new ones, the new applicants, the newly ones, they would have to have one in order to in, open. In order to in open. Order to period. Because that's right. under the new international building code. Right. Okay. Um, so what would the date bring it? What would what? So well, it, uh, again, and and was it would all come around. We were looking at uh, maybe 18 months from today. Uh, we're you know making it effective July 1st of uh, 2018. July 1st, 2018. Everybody's ventilation system had to be in. All the uh, the grandfathering would die in at. January, July 1st, July 1st right. 2018. Uh, for any existing business, all the new businesses coming in as of uh, the effective date. And, um, which we have to determine. Right, which we would have to determine. I, it says here, again, I think the effective date should be within, exactly. you want to make it like November 1st yeah. or something like that. Give yeah. the time through the newspaper and and response from the state and everything else, anybody else that's got any comments, including the AG. Um, okay, so we could we could conceivably do an effective date of January first, right? And if they registered with us, it would carry for a year and a half and okay. renew in July. Yeah, they have to register with us by January first. Does that does that any of the existing businesses? Does that sound? Mm -hmm. That way, it gives them ample time, and this way, it gives us the giving them a year and a half. The first expiration on the uh, first first years or the first cycle of permits will expire July 1st, 2018. Right. So they get a year and a half the first time around and then it, and it'll be a one year after that. Okay, so. So now so, we have to. So if we're looking through, um, if we start, we go number three, application and permit 3.4. It says the permit issued pursuant to the section shall be valid for a maximum period of one year and shall expire annually, annually on the anniversary <coughs> of the permit's initial date of issuance, which will be July 1st. Right, because that's when it will renew every year. Yeah, we might want to change the wording on that. Um, the first permit will be will it, um, first permit will be issued for July first of 2017, um, and will expire uh, July first 2000 uh, July first 2018. Right, so it'll actually January first January first to July first and. And then uh, as of July 1st of One 2018, yep. um, they'll uh, be valid for a one-year period. Okay. Teresa, did you understand that? Okay. All right. So then we move on to the next page, 4.7. This one. Sorry. Um, any new salon or salon that has applied for a permit under this regulation after, that will be the one... January 1st, 2017, because that's when this is going into effect. Um, any new salon or salon that has applied for a permit under this regulation after the effective date. Right, okay. And then later on it says, any existing nail salon or salon that has applied for a permit under this regulation before 
shall have before July 1st of 2018. Okay. Um, shall have until five years from said date of adoption to achieve. Uh, I'm sorry, wait a minute. No. Any existing nail salon or salon that has applied for a permit under this before? Yeah, before July 1st, 2018. We'll have, and then we should strike uh, five years from said date to. Uh, have until. They have until July 1st of 2018. Right. Uh, to, to comply. To achieve compliance. effective date mm -hmm. and then they have which would be January 1st right okay. yeah the, the the people that do register should not be given five years they're only going to be given a, a year and a half to get into compliance or about a year and a half okay and then we go to 4.13 which is talking about um, an autoclave or a registered dry heat sterilizer is there it says I just lost my hover nails on this before two years to achieve or do we want to stay with the same we stay with the same format okay. 18 months until until July 1st right 2018, 2018. excellent all right then Keep going, and then the next is the regulation shall take effect July, no, no. January, excuse me, 1st, 2017. Okay. Now, have we made it out an application form yet? Have we generated an application form? I do not think we have not done, okay. which we'll be, be working on. That'll be the next on. thing that we'll have to work on. Right. And get it out to the... Uh, uh, seven or eight practitioners yes. whatever you have. Okay. So any discussion regarding this from my board members and then I'll get to my audience. <clears throat> Where's the ventilation system noted in here? Um that's under here. Oh it's in that. Yeah, it's it's um, ventilation point. rate specification set forth in the version of the International Mechanic Code incorporated in the State Building Code at 780 CMR 28 and 271 CMR 6. <coughs> and it will be inspected um, to be sure that it's proper. What, what is the, what type of ventilation system? Where's the definition of, of, of ventilation system? Um, in the, in the guide regulate the those it's going to be whatever the whatever the approved ventilation system is under the building code right and basically what it is is makeup air is brought in and uh, in a uh, and an exhaust system is set up to uh, to pick up they they don't necessarily Source have to capture. pressurize or create a negative pressure or positive pressure in the room all they're doing is uh, they, at this point, they're just exchanging air, a fresh air makeup in, a, in, a, uh, in an exhaust system so that it carries away odors and impurities. Uh, but again, we're not the, uh, the HVAC or the, right. the HVAC <coughs> engineers. Let the HVAC engineers come up with, uh, and the building code come up with a standard. If it doesn't work, then we, re we report them to the... Uh, building inspector. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you understand? Yes. Okay. Do you have any questions? Mm -mm. No, I don't think so. Okay. I'll open up any um, questions or comments from the audience. Well, seeing how I'm in the hot seat, <laughs> I want to thank my fellow um, townspeople and board members for. Um, taking this as seriously as it should be taken to protect workers' health in salons, and they have um, to speak which in up turn a little protects bit our, which in turn protects the public health. Um, so, thank you very much. I applaud you all, and look forward to seeing this being implemented. Great, thank you.
Okay. Any more discussion on this? If not, I'm going to close the public hearing, and then we can go forward. All right. I'm going to close the public hearing for the nail salons at 7:05. <clears throat> okay. So now we get the fun part of. So do we have to vote on both of them or all in one? Do we need uh, do we need this printed out properly with the dates and check? And yeah, I think that's before we right. sign anything, yeah. <coughs> okay. on anything. You want to wait for the dates I before you vote? I don't want to vote on anything until I actually see it. That's fine. Okay. No, no problem. Yeah, make sure all the revisions are correct. Yep. So um, you'll have all of that for the next meeting and we will take a vote on, but can we do them separate? Do we do them separately? Because we have guidelines and then the regulation. Guidelines are just that's only that's informational only. Beautiful. Uh, the regulation is the only thing that you have to take a vote on, and beautiful. Uh, that becomes an official document. Okay. Uh, uh, guidelines can be too, but the guidelines are more of an explanatory help program. That's right. all it is. Okay. So next month we will. The dates all have to be changed here in this regulation, correct? Right. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so we'll do that. All right. Um, Teresa will do that. <laughs> no, we'll not do that. No, we, Teresa. we are Teresa. <laughs> so, all right. Okay. Up next, health inspector's report. I think I pretty much hit on everything, uh, although we've gotten uh, a lot of the housing complaints and a lot of problems we've had. We've got most everything addressed and cleaned up and put back to bed. Uh, we're from 13 opens down to what? Five. Five? Okay. We're catching up. Some of it, some of them, it's just follow-ups, you know, to make sure that everything has been done. There are uh, uh, some of the places it's been some some substantial improvement, but not complete compliance yet. Others were waiting for uh, documentation of receipt of uh, notices of violation, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, people haven't gone to the post office to pick up their notices. Right? So, and we haven't gotten anything back from the post office, so, to say that uh, they did or did not receive them, so. Okay. okay. Any questions for Tom? No. No. Wow, I'm just moving right along. <laughs> Old business. Does anyone have any old business? No. No. I have nothing either, so we'll move on to new business. I have things. Um, we do have a rabies clinic set up for Saturday, October 15th at the town hall in the lobby. It will be the Animal Hospital of Webster um, does it for us. They've been doing it for us twice a year now for many years and um, it's ten dollars per cat or dog um, dogs must be on a leash if they're aggressive they must have a muzzle and cats must be in a carrier <coughs> it is cash only and um, Teresa will be working that <coughs> that day she's looking <clears throat> forward to it so that's it's a great thing that we put out there for everyone so get your cats and dogs get them down there and then Harrington Health has set up um, flu clinics in the town. There'll be a flu clinic on Tuesday, October 18th from 10.30 to 11.30 at the Senior Center here. And you just need to bring your insurance card. And then they're also doing one at Joshua Place from one to two on that same day. So that'll be good. Get your flu shots and go ahead. One of the things that you might want to mention, if they don't have insurance card, they can still come and get Thank a flu you. shot. Most definitely. Whether you have insurance or not. Right, and they'll be here, and most likely Tuesday, October 18th, I'll probably be down there during that time, as well as uh, Teresa. We just go down, see how it's going, and I'll get, my flu, I'll get my flu shot. Do you give them to? Or? I would love to. <laughs> I'd love to. Okay. Um, new business. I'm trying to think if I does anybody have any new business? quiet tonight yeah you're just any new business no nope. Tom any new, any additional new business I don't think we had anything nothing um, nothing yet nothing yet <laughs> okay um, I'll open up does anyone have anything that they'd like to 
anything, uh, anyone in the audience, anyone like to say anything? You're good? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no problem. Okay, so seeing that that's everything, um, Julie will be here next month? Uh, covering for you, I should say. She's covering for me next month. Yeah. So that uh, you do have all of Julie's information, her cell phone number. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> so she'll be available to cover. Okay. Um, I don't know that you'd really need her at the meeting. But, if, uh, I, if we felt we'd if need you her, I'd feel let her you know. Do, you can let her know. Yeah, but I no, that's fine. If you don't mind, she'll drag the kids with her. So. No, no, that's fine. I, no, I love, babysit, so. Oh, I love her boys. <laughs> there, you have good grandkids. So before we um, close out, I will let you know the next meeting is going to be held on Wednesday, October 19th. We had to do a Wednesday again um, due to conflicting schedules, and it'll be in this room again. Um, so that we can make sure that we're taped. And so it'll be Wednesday, October 19th at 6.30. All right, so seeing as that, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I have a motion to adjourn. Second that. I have a second. Any more discussion? Aye. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting closed at 7.11. Thank you.